Sample preparation constitutes the interface between the original biological sample and the bioanalytical method. It is thus very important to optimize the sample preparation procedure in order to develop a successful bioanalytical method. Liquid-liquid extraction is based on the distribution of molecules between a water immiscible organic phase and the aqueous phase constituted by the sample. It is characterized by a number of parameters. First of all the distribution coefficient p. This is simply the ratio between the concentration of the analyte in the organic phase divide, divided by the concentration in the aqueous phase. Further to this we talk about the phase ratio. The phase ratio v is the volume of the organic phase divided by the aqueous phase. It is useful to express the amount of analyte that will be found in the organic phase and in the aqueous phase. The amount in the organic phase is called f org or the fraction of analyzed in the organic phase and equally f aq for the fraction of analyte in the aqueous phase. Unless there are some irreversible losses due to adsorption, we can assume that the fraction in the organic phase plus the fraction of the analyte in the aqueous phase should add up to 100% or 1. As said before, extraction yields can be optimized. The first parameter is obviously the choice of the organic solvent. This choice is however limited because the organic solvent should not be miscible with water. Eliminating solvents such as methanol or acetonitrile. Ethyl acetate is about the most hydrophilic organic solvent that is only limited miscible with water. N-hexane is on the other side the most hydrophobic solvent that can practically be used since drug molecules are usually not soluble in very hydrophobic organic solvents. <laughs> the most important parameter is the pH of the aqueous phase. Imagine having a basic drug molecule with an amino group. It is advisable to work at basic pH because then the amino group will not be charged and a neutral molecule naturally extracts better into an organic solvent than a charged molecule. Alternatively, if your drug molecule has an acidic group which is negatively charged at basic pH, it is better to go to low pH because at that pH the carboxylic acid group will be protonated and not charged and the molecule neutral and better extractable into an organic solvent. However, most drug molecules have both basic and acidic groups, they are so-called switter ionic groups. Here a compromise has to be found in pH somewhere between basic and acidic depending on the dissociation constants of the basic and the acidic groups respectively. A general way of improving extractions is salting out. Simply adding a salt to the aqueous phase increases the hydrophilicity of that phase and thus favors the extraction of a molecule into the organic solvent. However, it should be kept in mind that salting out will also favor the extraction of matrix molecules into the organic solvent so that the overall benefit may be limited. Finally, if drug molecules carry a permanent charge such as sulfonic acids or quaternary ammonium salts, adjusting pH will not help in extracting them into an organic phase. In this case it is possible to, to add an, uh, an iron pairing reagent which has the opposite charge, for example a sulfonic acid to a quaternary ammonium salt or the other way around, to increase the hydrophobicity. The iron pair reagent is oppositely charged and has also a long hydrophobic tail to increase the hydrophobicity of the iron pair in itself. When it comes to the properties of solvents used for liquid-liquid extraction there are a couple of points to be considered. 
The first point is the hydrophilicity of the solvent, or hydrophobicity, is the opposite thereof. If we look on the left side, we see solvents ranging from n-hexane to ethyl acetate. And hexane is a very hydrophobic solvent, while ethyl acetate is the most hydrophilic solvent that is still non-miscible with water. When saying that, looking at the right side of the table, we see that ethyl acetate does dissolve in water to 10%, which is considerable, and it also absorbs a considerable amount of water, namely 3.3%. This means that molecules that are soluble in water, not extracted into ethyl acetate, will still be found to a certain extent in the ethyl acetate phase due to this not complete immiscibility. On the other hand, n-hexane, cyclohexane are very hydrophobic and do not mix with water to any appreciable amount. A second parameter is the density of the solvent. There are two types of solvents, those that are less dense than water, they will form the upper phase, and those that are more dense than water, which will form the lower phase. You can easily see that the chlorinated hydrocarbons like chloroform and dichloromethane are more dense than water and will form lower phases, while all the other solvents are less dense and will form the upper phase. When it comes to handling liquid-liquid extraction in an automated pipetting system, it is easier to work with solvents that are lighter or less dense than water and form the upper phase, as the needle does not have to go through the water layer to get to the organic phase. If it has to go through the water layer and the interface, it may be contaminated from the outside with molecules that are in the water phase. Another parameter is the boiling point of solvents. As low boiling solvents, that is diethyl ether, form a certain hazard and have to be used for sure in a good, f well working fume hood. 35 degrees, you may think, in the summer, sometimes you almost reach that in a lab and there may be considerable evaporation of the solvent, which also will lead to changing volume of the organic solvent phase. There are remarks about these solvents which should be taken into consideration. And hexane is highly inflammable and has to be used with great care. Diethyl ether may form peroxides and thus may lead to explosions unless handled, unless handled properly. Chlorinated hydrocarbons, especially chloroform, are hepatotoxic and carcinogenic and are pretty much not used anymore. Chloroform has been pretty much replaced by dichloromethane. So please be aware when you do liquid-liquid extractions that organic solvents all have their downsides, so to speak, in terms of safety. The affinity of an analyte for the organic phase has already been discussed is related to the distribution coefficient. In the literature you will often see the logarithm of p, the logarithm of the distribution coefficient as a description of the hydrophobicity of a solvent, uh, sorry, of a molecule. So if the logarithm of the distribution coefficient p is small, we'll talk about a hydrophilic molecule, a molecule that's difficult to extract into an organic solvent. If this logarithm of p is big, much bigger than zero, we speak about a hydrophobic molecule or lipophilic molecule, which is easier to extract into a solvent. Finally, the relation between the distribution coefficient and the phase ratio discussed earlier can be used to calculate the fraction of a given molecule that will be found in the organic phase. This makes liquid-liquid extraction a uh, method that is fairly easy to understand, predictable, and where the extraction yields can be a priori, up to a certain extent, calculated. Back to basics, and essentially the knowledge that you gained already during previous pharmaceutical analysis courses. How can I influence the extraction yield by changing the pH of the aqueous phase? This very simply relates to the equilibrium between an acid, A- and a proton to form the non-protonated acid HA or to a base B that can be protonated to the 
protonated base Hb+. It is important to remember that charged molecules are much more hydrophilic than neutral molecules. This means that the protonated acid HA can be more easily extracted into an organic solvent than HA-. The same goes for the base. The non-protonated base B can be much more easily extracted into an organic solvent than the protonated base HB+. Where this equilibrium is, is determined by the equilibrium constant Ka, which is given for an acid on the left side and for a base on the right side and should be well known to you. Transforming this into the negative logarithm presents the well-known henderson hasselbalch equations, giving the dependence of the ratio of A- to HA for an acid on the pH or of B to HB plus dependent on the pH for a base. Remember, it is important to have as much HA as possible, to have good extraction yields and to have as much as B as much B po as possible to have a good extraction yield for a base. This is the basis for optimizing the pH of a liquid-liquid extraction. By combining the henderson hasselbalch equations and the equation about the extraction yield on slide 4, the following equations can be derived which relate the concentration of protons, or in other words the pH, to the amount of a molecule that will be found in the organic phase F-Org. Please see the reader for the detailed derivation of these equations. Essentially for an acid it is important to realize that the pH should be lowered to get a better extraction yield. If you look at these equations lowering the pH means increasing the H plus concentration and if you follow this through you will see that the term Ka divided by H plus will go against zero as H plus increases. This means that P times V divided by P times V uh, plus 1 will almost go to 1. That means F org will approach 100%. Looking at the equation for base, it's the other way around. By decreasing the H plus concentration, meaning by increasing the pH, the term H plus divided by Ka will go to 0 and again F org will approach 100%. So it's quite simple. You want to extract an acid, go to low pH. If you want to extract the base, go to high pH. What is then low and what is high pH? Low pH is always relative to the dissociation constant of an acid. Let's take acetic acid with a Ka of something like 10 to the minus 4.75. That means the pH should be at least one unit lower than pH 4.75 to have most of the acid protonated. And for a base it's the other way around. So the dissociation constant Ka determines what is an appropriate pH to extract an acid or a base into an organic solvent. Let's take an example. The local anesthetic lidocaine. Everybody knows it most likely because it's used by dentists to uh, anesthetize your mouth before drilling a hole in the tooth or even extracting a tooth. Hopefully this will never happen to you. Lidokine is a base. As you can see from the tertiary amine group on the upper right end of the molecule. This amine can be protonated to the uh, ammonium cation, which is much less hydrophobic and thus difficult to extract. So it is important to adjust the pH to the more hydrophobic non-protonated base. Let's consider a basic drug molecule with a pKa of 11 and a distribution coefficient of 100 into the organic phase for its neutral molecule. Here we see the fraction of this molecule in the organic phase. 
At low pH, where the base is protonated, there is essentially nothing in the organic phase, so F org is zero. As the pH approaches the uh, pKa, starting at 8, you will see that the molecule slowly is better extracted into the organic phase. At a pH of 9, 50% of the molecule distribute into an organic phase and 50% into the aqueous phase. pH 9 derives from the pKa of 11 minus the 10 to the 2 for the distribution coefficient. At pH 11, almost 100% of this basic drug molecule is extracted into the organic phase. So again you can see that the pH should be at least at the pKa or preferably one unit higher to have full and complete extraction into the organic phase. If we look at an acidic drug molecule, the opposite is true. At low pH values, where the acid is protonated and thus molecule is neutral, it is very well extracted into the organic phase. As the pH increases, the acid is deprotonated, becoming negatively charged and thus more hydrophilic. At pH 6, 50% extracted into the organic phase, while 50% remain into the aqueous phase. Again, due to the distribution coefficient in favor of the neutral molecule of 100. At around pH 8, nothing is extracted anymore into the organic phase. Unfortunately, most drug molecules are not that simple. Morphine, for example, is a splitter ionic molecule. That means it contains an acidic as well as a basic moiety. It is that not, thus not easy to optimize the pH, as with very high pH, the basic moiety will be protonated, while at very low pH, the acidic moiety will also be protonated and neutral. So there is an optimal pH somewhere in the middle of the pH range. As we have two overlapping extraction curves, one for the acid, which is best extracted at low pH, and one for the base, which is best extracted at high pH, we reach an optimal pH value of around pH 9, where about 90% of morphine can be extracted. We will not be able to reach 100% because as we change the pH to either more acidic or more basic pH values, extraction yield will go down because either the base is more protonated or the acid side is more deprotonated. This can be extract, uh, expressed in numbers for the acid and the base. If you would treat the two as two separate molecules, we'll see that the acid is well extracted at low pH values, even up to pH 8, and then the extraction yield goes down because the acid is not very strong, it has a pKa of 9.9. .9. For the base, it's the other way around. Poor extraction at low pH, increasing at high pH. And in the middle, you have the optimal pH of pH 9. In the case that the drug molecule has a permanent charge, either positive or negative, it is not possible to increase the extraction yield by adjusting the pH value of the aqueous phase. In this case, we have to resort to iron pair extraction. The iron pair extraction is rather easy to understand. In this case, we have a positively charged drug molecule in the aqueous phase and we add a negatively charged iron pair forming reagent X- in the aqueous phase. Due to electrostatic interactions, an iron pair QX is formed that is more hydrophobic and can be extracted into the organic phase. There are two reasons for this. First reason is that the charges are neutralized and the second reason is that the iron pairing reagent usually contains hydrophobic groups which make the iron pair overall more hydrophobic. 
Iron pair formation can be expressed by an equilibrium between the iron pair in the organic phase and the free ions Q plus and X minus in the aqueous phase. The equilibrium constant is called Kx. Kx can also be expressed in terms of a distribution coefficient, p. p is the concentration of the iron pair in the organic phase divided by the concentration of the free drug molecule Q plus in the aqueous phase and it is also, according to the equation on the left side, the extraction coefficient times the concentration of the iron pair reagent. So if you want to increase P, so you want to extract more into the organic phase, a simple way of doing that is just increasing the concentration of the counter ion X minus. However, there are limits to this. X minus as a hydrophobic N ion cannot be indefinitely dissolved in aqueous media. Usually iron pair reagents are used in the millimolar range also for the reason that they are fairly expensive. Again, using this equation you can calculate the fraction of your drug molecule in the organic phase F org according to the well-known equation P times V divided by P times V plus 1. If we now replace P by Kx times X minus, we arrive at an equation relating the fraction in the organic phase to the concentration of the ion pairing reagent, the extraction coefficient and the phase ratio V. Let's look at a few examples. Example 1 is a steroid analog norethindrone, which is used as a contraceptive. This molecule should be determined in plasma. What are the physical chemical properties of this molecule? It's a neutral molecule. It's a fairly hydrophobic molecule with a log P of 3.2 and it has no dissociable groups. That means there is no discernible pKa. This means essentially you cannot do much with adjusting the pH. In this practical method taken from uh, the routine analysis at PRA, we first mix 500 microliter plasma with 50 microliters of an internal standard, which is deuterated norethindrone for mass spectrometry. We'll come to the use of internal standards for mass spectrometry later on in this lecture series. We add 500 microliters of water and mix. This is also to dilute the plasma, which is generally quite viscous. The drug molecule is extracted into 2.5 milliliters of 1% isomyl alcohol in pentane. You realize pentane is an extremely hydrophobic solvent. But if you look at the molecule, you see it is essentially a made of carbon and hydrogen. It's a very hydrophobic molecule and thus extracting it into pentane is very advantageous because very few other biological molecules in the matrix will be extracted. Pentane can be easily evaporated as it is highly volatile, 15 minutes at 40 degrees, and the analyte can be redissolved for further bioanalysis. This method has a recovery of about 70%, which makes use of an internal standard critical. The second example shows a basic molecule. Overall it's a much more complex molecule. It's called sequinavir. It's an antiviral agent used against HIV infections. It's a basic molecule. It's also fairly hydrophobic due to the aromatic rings and it has a pKa of 7. It should be measured in plasma. For this method we use 25 microliters of plasma and add 100 microliters of the internal standard deuterated sequinavir. 100 microliters of a buffer pH 9 is added to go 2 units above the pKa value of sequinavir, thus to render it neutral and it is mixed. Extraction is performed with 2 milliliters of diethyl ether 
As you may remember, this is somewhat miscible with water, but only a little bit. The organic phase is taken and again evaporated over 20 minutes at 45 degrees. Sequidamvir is redissolved and then used for bioanalysis by liquid chromatography mass spectrometry to be discussed later in this lecture series. The recovery in this case is 90%. Let's look at another example, the anti-inflammatory drug fluobiprofene. It is an acidic molecule with a log P of 3.8 and a pKa of 4.2. We mix 100 microliters of plasma with 100 microliters of internal standard solution, in this case naproxene. Please note we do not use a deuterated internal standard as the detection method is not based on mass spectrometry. To extract the molecule into the organic phase, we adjust the pH to pH 2 and extract into 2 milliliters of N-chlorobutane. The organic solvent is subsequently evaporated over 15 minutes at 40 degrees and the analyte redissolved. The overall recovery of this procedure is 90%. Our final example is lamotrigine, an anti-epileptic that is supposed to be bioanalyzed in plasma. Again, it's a basic molecule with primary amino groups, highlighted here, one is highlighted. It's fairly hydrophilic, has a log P of 1.2 and a pKa of 5.7. First, it is extracted from 500 microliter plasma with 500 microliter of a buffer at pH 9.5 to deprotonate the primary amines. It's extracted into 4 milliliters of methyl tertiary butyl ether and then it is back extracted into water. This is an additional trick to further enrich and purify the drug molecule. By adding sulfuric acid the pH will go to acidic side and the amines will be protonated. Consequently the drug molecule will become more hydrophilic and go back from the methyl tertiary butyl ether phase into the water phase. The overall recovery of this procedure is 80%. So you may ask, why isn't everybody using liquid-liquid extraction? It has advantages, it's easily performed, requires only a few steps as you've seen. The mechanism of why something is extracted and how to optimize that is easily understandable. However, there are disadvantages to liquid-liquid extractions which have led to it being replaced by other methods, not completely, but to a large extent. There is a limited choice of selectivity, as there is a limited choice of organic solvents. Large volumes of organic solvent are generally required. Even if you only use a milliliter of organic solvent for an analysis, if you have a thousand analyses a week, you already have to dispose of one liter of somewhat toxic organic solvent. So this adds up to the cost of the analytical method. There are potential loss of analyte during solvent evaporation as analytes may precipitate or stick to the tubes. One uh, feature of liquid-liquid extraction which I did not discuss yet is emulsion formation. That means if you have protein-rich uh, biological samples and you shake them, you may get foam and these emulsions kind of prevent or make it very difficult to separate the organic from the aqueous phase. You may need to centrifuge or use other means to separate the two phases which make it awkward and time-consuming. As mentioned above, analytes may adsorb to the glass tubes that are generally used because of the organic solvent, leading to loss of analyte. And the method is not easy to automate, as you will have to pipe at sometimes very low viscosity organic solvents. And you can imagine, if you've ever tried it, to pipe at an organic solvent is not easy, as it may just run out of the pipette by itself. That's why liquid-liquid extraction is being increasingly replaced by solid phase extraction, abbreviated SPE. Solid phase extraction may also be considered 
A simple way of chromatography. First, analyte is bound, interfering molecules are washed away, and finally the analyte is eluted. Well, it's not always as simple as that, but that's the principle. Solid phase extraction is done in fairly simple devices shown on this slide. It's a plastic tube filled with a sorbent bed. That means a chromatographic stationary phase of fairly coarse particle diameter, in this case 40 micrometers. This sorbent bed is fitted between two fritted discs to hold it in place. On the top we have the sample reservoir of a couple of milliliters where we can place our sample that may be preconditioned or pre-adjusted with, with respect to pH value. Finally, the liquid that's coming out of the tube is collected in fraction collector or in a micro titer plate. That means the wash fraction and most importantly the elution fraction. SPE has become very popular because there's a very wide range of commercially available stationary phases as we will see. This is summarized in the following slide. Here is the procedure for a simple SPE procedure. First the material needs to be conditioned, that means equilibrated at a given pH or conditioned with a certain concentration of organic solvent like methanol in water or acetonitrile in water. Subsequently sample is added, the various molecules of drug, of drug analyte of interest as well as matrix molecules bind to the stationary phase. Conditions are chosen that the matrix molecules are washed away and the drug molecules retained on the stationary phase and subsequently the drug analyte is eluted. This is obviously an idealized version of solid phase extractions since no conditions can be usually found where all matrix molecules are washed away or rinsed away and only the drug analyte is retained since the physical chemical properties of matrix molecules span a very wide range and often overlap with the analyte molecule. Nevertheless, due to the many possibilities of stationary phases and conditions for solid phase extraction, significant enrichment going beyond liquid-liquid extraction can generally be achieved. A general advantage of solid phase extraction is that it can be easily automated. Here you see a typical 96 well plate format with small solid phase extraction devices or cartridges underneath. These kind of plates can be adapted to any kind of standard liquid handling robotics and so many samples can be processed in parallel and collected in standard 96 well plates which are adapted to most auto analyzers or liquid chromatography mass spectrometry systems. Combined with the wide variety of stationary phases that are available for solid phase extraction, this makes solid phase extraction the method of choice ahead of liquid chromatography mass spectrometry analyses. Let us take a look at the various kinds of stationary phases, some of which may be familiar to you from earlier pharmaceutical analysis courses and the chromatography, are available to the user. We have the reversed phase solid phase extraction materials where the stationary phase is hydrophobic and the mobile phase more hydrophilic. Molecules are retained due to hydrophobic interactions. Reversed phase solid phase extraction materials range from the slightly hydrophobic ethyl chains to the very hydrophobic octadecyl chains. There are also materials with specific properties such as the aromatic phenyl groups or the cyclohexyl groups. Why do materials have to be preconditioned? Especially reversed phase materials need to be preconditioned because hydrophobic alkane chains like the here shown C8 chain do not like to be in water. It's just like a drop of oil who does not like to disperse in water. They will thus interact with each other and not be available to bind any analyte. By preconditioning them with methanol or acetonitrile, these chains are deaggregated 
and then become available for interactions with the analytes. The materials shown here are based on silica, which is shown as SiOH. That means that there are also somewhat hydrophilic OH groups from the silicic acid in between. These groups may be left as they are, or they may be blocked with small organic molecules to avoid any kind of ionic interactions, or as they are also called, silanophilic interactions. On the other side of the coin, we have hydrophilic stationary phases that are used with hydrophobic mobile phases. These are called normal phase SPE. Examples are the cyanopropyl chains, the immobilized aminopropyl chains, or the diol phases. The first group is the cyano group, which gives it some hydrophilicity due to its dipole moment. The aminopropyl groups, depending on the pH, can either be neutral and thus relatively hydrophobic, or charged and thus more hydrophilic, very much like the basic drug molecules. And this is dependent on the mobile phase pH. The diol groups are inherently hydrophilic, thanks to their alcohol moieties, and thus they function as normal phase no matter what the pH is. Ion exchange solid phase extraction materials are widely used to enrich charged molecules. As many drug molecules contain either, either basic, acidic or basic and acidic groups, ion exchange SPE is a widely used technique. As ion exchange chromatography materials, also SPE materials can be dis distributed or discriminated into anion and cation exchange materials. On the top we see a weak cation exchanger. It's essentially an immobilized carboxylic acid that can be deprotonated at higher pH to the anion. It can thus exchange or bind cationic molecules from the sample. Similarly, you can immobilize a primary amine, as shown below. Here we have an aminopropyl weak anion exchanger that can be protonated at lower pH and thus bind anion anionic molecules. Similarly, you have strong cation and strong anion exchangers. A strong cation exchanger contains a negative charge, in this case a sulfonic acid, that is negatively charged no matter what the pH, because this is a very strong acid. For a strong anion exchanger, we usually use quaternary ammonium salts, which are always positively charged, no matter the pH. Next to these principles, ion exchange SPE materials can be bound to many different basic materials such as silica, shown in this case, but also various kinds of polymers. While we were so far referring mainly to silica-based stationary phases, there's an increasing family of SPE materials that is based on polymers. Polymers are inherently hydrophobic, like the example shown here of polystyrene divinyl benzene, which is composed of aromatic groups connected by alkyl chains. In order to use such materials for ion exchange solid phase extraction or normal phase solid phase extraction, they need to be derivatized. Today many polymer-based materials are available with the same functional groups as shown for silica-based materials. Polymer-based materials have the advantage that higher pH values can be used than for silica, as silica hydrolyzes at pH values above pH 9. The forces that make molecules bind to solid phase extraction materials are not different than the forces in chromatography. We have hydrophobic interactions between hydrophobic analytes and hydrophobic groups on the stationary phase. We will hear more about the hydrophobic effect, which is essentially due to the elimination of water interacting with hydrophobic moieties and thus an increase in entropy of the entire system. 
Van der Waals interactions are also important, although weaker, they are much more numerous in numbers. Van der Waals interactions are essentially interactions between induced or permanent dipoles, for example, between the dipoles of aromatic moieties, as shown here. Finally, electrostatic interactions, as already described, are very strong and long-ranging. In this example, we see the interaction between an immobilized quaternary ammonium salt and the negative charge of a drag molecule due to a deprotonated carboxylic acid. Remember, it is very important here to choose the proper pH to favor such interactions, as the carboxylic acid has to be negatively charged. It is instructive to look at the binding energies that play a role in solid phase extraction. Compared to a covalent bond, which has binding energies of 200 to 800 kilojoule per mole, electrostatic, also called ionic interactions, can sometimes reach such a strength. Their binding energy reaches from 40 to 400 kilojoule per mole. Remember also in this case, the formation of iron pairs, that means iron pairs may be sometimes as strongly bound to each other as covalent bonds. Hydrogen bonds and van der Waals interactions are much weaker, but they occur in great numbers. That means summing them up may also lead to very strong interactions. Even weaker interactions are the dipole-dipole and the induced dipole-dipole interactions. Again. There may be many, especially in macromolecules such as proteins, so that overall binding may still be quite strong. Usually all of these interactions contribute to the binding of molecules to solid phase extraction materials. Let's take a look at a few examples for solid phase extraction sample preparation. Digoxin is a cardiovascular drug that should be determined in plasma. As you can deduce from the structure, it's a neutral molecule with an intermediate log P. The concept of pKa is not applicable here. It is an interesting molecule as it is composed of a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic part. The hydrophobic part constitutes a steroid kind of backbone, while the hydrophilic part is due to carbohydrates attached to this. It is thus very appropriate to use a hydrophobic hydrophilic balance stationary phase. That means a stationary phase that contains hydrophobic and hydrophilic moieties adapted to the analyte. To enrich digoxin, 500 microliters of plasma are mixed with the internal standard, which is deuterated digoxin in water assuming that we can do a mass spectrometry analysis. We condition the SBE column with one milliliter of methanol and one milliliter of water to release the hydrophobic moieties from interacting with each other. We load the sample and wash with one milliliter methanol under acidic pH, formic acid, to remove any kind of molecules containing amines which will be protonated and thus rendered less hydrophobic. At the same time, we can, uh, following, we can wash methanol with ammonia and a basic pH to remove molecules with carboxylic acids. Finally, we elute with simply with methanol and receive a recovery of 85%. Please note that by switching the pH, we remove basic and acidic molecules while keeping the neutral digoxin on the stationary phase. The following is an interesting example. It's a steroid 4-beta-hydroxycholesterol, a biomarker. It's a neutral molecule that's very hydrophobic, as you can see. Has a log P of 7.6 and the concept of pKa is not applicable in this case. As it is a very hydrophobic molecule, we'll have to work with a hydrophobic mobile phase in which it is soluble. Consequently, we choose normal phase SPE with a diol phase as the stationary phase. 400 microliters of plasma are complemented with the internal standard solution and then 
extracted with a liquid liquid extraction into 2 ml hexane. By this way, we bring our biomarker into a very hydrophobic organic solvent. We condition the column with hexane and load the sample in the hexane extract. We again wash with hexane and then elude with a more hydrophilic mobile phase composed of ethyl acetate and hexane. The combined liquid-liquid extraction and solid phase extraction provide us with a recovery of 70%. Please note the combination of liquid-liquid extraction to get the molecule into the very hydrophobic hexane phase and the normal phase solid phase extraction which provide an excellent pre-purification of 4-beta-hydroxycholesterol. Let's finally look at a basic molecule, citalopramine antidepressant. It has an intermediate hydrophobicity log P of 3.7 and a basic group with a pKa of 9.5. We choose a solid phase stationary phase, a cation exchanger with a sulfonic acid group, but also with a bit of hydrophobic moieties, so you can make use of ionic and hydrophobic interactions to enrich citalopram from other molecules in plasma. First we mix 50 microliters of plasma with internal standard deuterated citalopram. We condition the column with 0.2 milliliters methanol and 0.2 milliliters formic acid. This means that the amine group in citalopram is protonated. We load the sample and the molecule is captured through ionic interactions between the protonated amine group and the negatively charged sulfonic acid group. We wash with 0.1% formic acid and then with methanol to remove matrix molecules. Finally, we elute at high pH with 1% ammonia to deprotonate the tertiary amine of citalopram and to result in a recovery of 75%. There are many ways to do solid phase extraction in an automated manner. I've already introduced the 96 well plate concept. Another way is to couple solid phase extraction online with liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. This is shown in this uh, schematic. On the left side you see that an HPLC pump is coupled to an analytical column and a mass spectrometer. This is a classical liquid chromatography mass spectrometry setup to which we will come back in the future, one of the future lectures. On the other side you see that an SPE column or a small SPE cartridge is connected to the sample injector and another pump called the SPE pump. Here the sample is loaded onto the solid phase extraction column in an automated way using this switching valve. By turning the valve into the other position, we now use the HPLC pump to elude the solid phase extraction column onto the analytical liquid chromatography column and then into the mass spectrometer. This kind of automated online solid phase extraction system can be run unattended and uh, process one sample after the other. It has the advantage of very good extraction efficiency and online coupling, but it has the disadvantage that one sample after the other has to be processed. So it is a sequential system, while the 96 square plate system is a parallel processing system where 96 samples can be processed at the same time. This slide summarizes the points to consider from the first two lectures. Please rehearse what are the essential steps of a bioanalytical method. How do the physical chemical properties of an analyte affect liquid liquid and solid phase extraction? What's the difference between qualitative and quantitative analysis and what is needed? Think about the different biological matrices and how they may affect the bioanalytical method. What about protein binding of pharmaceuticals and how they affect the properties of the analytes. We went through liquid-liquid extraction and the equilibra equilibration equations that allow you to calculate the extraction yield dependent on pH. 
how can you further optimize extractions in liquid-liquid extraction, for example by sorting out and iron pair formation. We rehearse the many materials that are available for solid phase extraction classified into reversed phase, normal phase and ion exchange materials. And finally, you should be able, based on the applications that you've seen and the knowledge from these two chapters, to develop a simple bioanalytical method given a certain molecule presented to you that is for example basic, acidic or switter ionic.